Today is Vision Sunday Transformation Church. Let's give God some praise. And I'm so excited about this because um, vision is my thing. Like if you only could like allow me to do one thing, like if God said you only get to do one thing for the rest of your life, my one thing would be getting vision from him and then making other people believe it. Like I'm anointed to do that. Like, like, it's my, it's like I feel more in my spot on Vision Sundays than ever before because I've stood in this exact spot when nobody was in this church and prophesied where we are today into existence because God gave me a vision. He gave me a vision that I was bold enough to declare to other people in the face of it not looking like it could ever happen. And yesterday I drove one of my pastor friends who came in town this weekend to just spend the weekend with me. I drove them to all the locations in Tulsa that we have and showed them all the buildings that y'all don't even know that I'm planning for our church to subdue, rule, and dominate. Yeah, no, 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 no. We're going to see kingdom come and his will be done. You're talking about people coming out of incarceration. We got to have jobs for them. We, no, let me stop. <laughs> We got to have housing for the homeless. We don't just want to give them a shower. We want to be able to give them a home for six months. We got to, y'all, I'm sharing too much right now. But we got to take this thing outside of Tulsa. But, but right now, it may look impossible. But when God gives you a word or gives you a vision, you can call the things that are not. And you can say them as if they've already happened. So today, um, I just want to let you know, as a church and as a pastor, I got the vision thing down. Like, I'm living in the vision God showed me. That's not a mark of a good leader. The mark of a good leader is that the people that are following the visionary live in the vision that God has given them. And I will not stop preaching vision until every person that is attached to this ministry is walking, living, breathing, giving, and standing in the vision that God showed you in the night season. In the vision that he gave you as you were walking in. Oh, y'all don't. Does anybody in the place have a vision? And see, the reason why. It's something that nobody talks about is because we've been conditioned, especially in Western America, to only be able to build somebody else's vision. We've been never taught to believe in what God placed in us. And today, I want to empower you to be able to stand in the vision that God has given you and to declare In the midst of darkness, where you see the light of God coming into that situation. And I'm going to share it personally for you. And then I'm going to tell you the word of the year for Transformation Church. Because at Transformation Church, vision is most valuable. Let me, let me, I'm going to say something just a little controversial. Is that okay, Clifford? Let 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 me just say it like this. Vision is more important than people. Because if you don't have a vision for the people, you're going to damage the people. May I suggest to you that many people are hurt by church, not because of bad leaders, but because of lack of vision. Can, can Can I help you? That your marriage may not be bad because you're with the wrong person. It may be challenged because of the lack of fish the job that you're on right now ain't the wrong job actually you are ordained to be there you're actually supposed to solve a problem there but the reason that you have your two weeks notice on deck at all times some of y'all i know some of y'all got your resignation letter ready it's in the drafts right now and the reason you're ready to send it is because there is a lack of somebody say it vision So I need everybody to give me the next minutes to be able to unpack 
the word of God to every person here. Are you ready? Yeah. I, I, in the chat, I need you to let me know in the building. Are you ready? Yeah. So, so today, I, I, I softly titled um, this whole Vision Sunday clearly. Everybody say out at me clearly. clearly. Um, and, and it really didn't come from a very spiritual place. I'm going to be very, y'all know I'm hot. I'm humble, open, and transparent. I'm going to tell you everything that I know, and and, and I'm going to tell you how, because sometimes people try to make it really deep, and it ain't that deep. In 1972, there was a guy named Johnny Nash that made a song called I Can See Clearly Now. And as I was preparing this message, for some reason, I haven't heard that song in years. But somewhere down on the inside of me, God just began to let that melody come out of me. And I was like, I can see clearly now. The rain is low. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark nights that had me blind. It's going to be a bright, 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 sunshiny day. That felt good. That kind of felt good, didn't it? Um, I began to listen to those words, and God began to say, he said, Michael, the past two years have been like rain over people's lives. And he said, they need to prophetically declare that I can see clearly now that the rain is gone. I can see. Everybody say, I can see. see. All the obstacles in my way. It didn't say the obstacles wouldn't be there. It just says, now I can see them. Some of y'all have had friends that you didn't see who they really were. You were befriending obstacles. You were not able to see clearly because of the damage, the frustration, the hurt, the pain, the trauma. But now God's saying you can see clearly all the obstacles. See, when you see an obstacle, you're able to move around it. It says, gone are the dark nights that had me blind. Prophetically declaring in crazy faith, it's going to be a bright it, like, like the sun's coming into my situation. And I begin to listen to that and I begin to play it. And I'll be like, well, is there any scriptures that talk about something being that was blurry, being made clear and all this other stuff? And God said, Michael, this is what I want you to lead my people into in this vision series to let them know that the problem has not been a lack of vision for many of you. You got a vision. The problem has truly been that you haven't seen the vision clearly. That's, you you got an idea of the place in the field in the area you're supposed to be in, but you don't see it clearly. I know I'm supposed to be in ministry somewhere, but is it supposed to be full-time vocational? Am I supposed to quit my job again? And we start making dumb decisions because we don't see the vision clearly. I know I feel my season of being single coming to an end, but am I supposed to date him? Am I supposed to date them? Am I supposed to go there? Am I supposed to move? I need to see the vision clearly. And God told me to tell you today, the problem is not vision. The problem is clarity of vision from God. Those last two words mean the most. Most of us have vision we want to happen in our life. But the question I must agitate you with today, is it from God? Where did the package come from? Where did the thought come from? Where did the idea come from? If the vision came from your dad who had a high school dream, and now wants to live his high school dream through you because you have the same athletic ability, but you feel a tug in your heart that God is calling you into academia and you're supposed to stop playing basketball in high school, but you don't because you know that it will sever your relationship with him because he hasn't dealt with his own insecurities about what didn't happen in his life. I'm just, I don't know who that applies to. But, but, but God is saying, did it come from me? Or are you living in, walking in, and trying to fulfill a vision that you are not graced for? The problem is not vision. (laughs) Some of y'all are at colleges that you weren't supposed to be at. You joined fraternities and sororities 
that were a distraction to the purpose that God wanted to give you. Or I'm going to just say it anyway. Some of y'all pick majors for the salary you thought it would make you. And you didn't know you wouldn't even work in that field. <laughs> but God did. Because many of us are standing, walking, and living in visions that do not come from God. Let me give you Bible for it. Proverbs 29, 18. I'm going to read it from the message version because most of y'all know the churchy version of this. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Sometimes when the Bible uses words like perish, you, you just like, yeah, I ain't going to die because of not vision. Like, so it, it doesn't register the same way. I, I know because I've done it before. But let me read it to you in the message version and maybe see if it walks down your street. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. The reason you've been tripping is because you don't see God clearly. Uh, let me stop. It says, but when you attend to what he reveals, not what's trending, not what's culturally pop popular, not what the new financial trend is, Bitcoin, NFT, it, not that. When you attend to what he reveals, those people are most blessed. And I want this church to be most blessed. That means I have to challenge your vision. And I have to ask you a question that your mama won't ask you and your daddy won't ask you. And nobody will ask you if you're making enough money. Can I be very clear that in this culture, people equate money with success and success with purpose. All of those things are disconnected. Just because you have money does not mean you're successful. Jimmy, can I tell him? There are many people that you see that if you actually looked into their life, you would not want anything that they have. So money does not equal success, and success does not equal purpose. Ask Saul. He was the king of the entire, and he was out of purpose because he would not wait on the Lord. And I just want to encourage you right now to see the vision. Somebody shout at me clearly. clearly. Say it again. Clearly. That's what I'm praying for your family. That's what I'm praying for your marriage. That's what I'm praying for your business. That in 2022, you would see God's vision clear. The problem is that means it may contradict what you've been doing. So when you see vision clearly, it means you have to correct what you've been doing wrong. And this is why we're going to have to walk through this all year. I can't wait to give you the word of the year because it's going to anchor us. Oh, because y'all know anchoring didn't stop. 2021, the word was anchored and God said, I'm building on top of all of this. You started striding. I need you to keep doing this. I'm going to release to you. I need you. to. He's just building his word. He's creating a sentence. And this year, he said, I want you to keep anchoring yourself, but I need you to see the vision clearly. And do you know, okay, let me ask this question. How many people wear glasses? How many four eyes do I have in the room? All right, God bless you. Make some noise if you wear glasses all over. So, so let me make a confession. I don't actually need to wear glasses. I like wearing glasses. It makes me feel a little more studious. <laughs> it makes me feel like I'm, I'm doing something. But the one thing I hate about glasses is that when I go into different environments, <sighs> it jacks up the way I see when the environments change drastically. What hinders me from seeing clearly when I'm wearing glasses, especially in COVID, when I'm wearing glasses and a mask? It's just like, I just be like, oh. it hinders me from seeing clearly. And, and it creates what they call a fog. And, and I made an acronym for fog. Fog is frustration. It's obstacle. And it's a gap between me and what I want to see. Now, many of you don't have glasses, but how many people have been in a car with a big windshield when you've come in to a weather change? 
Okay. I want to just give everybody a practical example. When you see that big windshield and everything begins to fog up, it becomes a frustration, an obstacle, and a gap between what you, where you are and what you need to see. I'll give one more example just for the married people in the building. Um, when you start sharing a nice shower with your wife, see, some of y'all too saved for this. Y'all don't. Will, thank you for understanding what I'm saying. When you share the bathroom with your wife, marriage rocks, y'all. I love marriage. And she might be in the shower. You might be brushing your teeth, but you still need to communicate. There's a problem because what ends up happening is there is a fog, a frustration, obstacle, and gap between me and her communicating. And on what ends up happening is me and Natalie have had several conversations where she saw me and I heard her, but there was no actual communication that I could understand because we could not see each other clearly. And I begin to think this is what most people's lives look like, where things are in HD and then all of a sudden, the detail is gone. The, 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 the exact nature of what I thought I saw, I don't see. How many fingers am I holding up? Come on, tell me. How many fingers am I holding up? Most people don't know. Not because you don't know I'm holding up my hand. Right. But because you cannot see it, help me clearly. And God says, this is what your 2022 looks like currently. You know you're around the place you should be. But there's no detail. I'm about to preach the crap out of this. There's no detail to the directions. There's no intentionality to the instructions. And the only way that me and Natalie are able to actually get communication is that we see each other, everybody shout at me clearly. clearly. And we cannot see each other clearly until there's a touch. When my wife puts her touch on that foggy situation, it clears up, I'm about to preach this. Now how many fingers am I holding up? Now how many fingers am I holding up? Now how many fingers am I holding up? He's the only one that can touch your situation and take it from a situation that looked foggy. And he can be able to clear up the mess, the noise, the disappointment, whatever area. You should be asking God to touch every area of your life this year. Touch my marriage. Touch my attitude. Oh, touch the pain. Somebody shout at me clearly. Because when we can see the vision of God clearly, oh, it changes how we respond how we react, and how we worship. So today, I need to let you know that we're not going into 2022. We're 16 days in, I think. We're not going another day without a touch from God on this year. I'm not going to live a foggy, frustrated, obstacle-driven, gap life. I'm not going to do that. I'm asking God to touch my situation. Why do I want God to touch my situation? Write this point down because one touch from God can bring clear vision. One touch. And in 2022, I have decided I want his hands on my plans. Hey, I want his hands on my plans. It don't matter. I want his hands on my plans. What plan have you made without God? Some of y'all have vacations planned that you didn't even ask God. Was that the time you were supposed to go on? 
See, what he was trying to do is in the plan where you were going to go on vacation, he was going to give you vision. He was going to give you relationship. He was going to change something in your life. And I'm asking you, whatever plans you have made, you need to decide. I got to see that thing clearly. I want his hands on my plan. Y'all know how bad I want to make that into a song right now. You feel that. You feel that. Y'all do it on your own time. Amen. But that's why we have to do what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says. I'm going to acknowledge God in all of my plans, all of my ways, all of my decisions, and then he will direct my path. All I'm trying to do, church, is just make you value vision. Because most people don't value it. We, 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 we vi- can I say it? We value viral. We, we would rather something be big than be God. We value verification. We would rather be verified by a social media platform than be verified by God. And God's saying, would you invite me into all of your plans so that I can clear up everything that has been hazy and foggy in your life? Why why do we need it to be clear, Pastor Mike? I I mean, I know the general direction. Let me help you. What's not clear always becomes confused. What's not clear will always be confused. The reason why you don't know where you and him stand in your relationship is because it's not clear. Are y'all together? I don't know. He's just, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we just, I don't know. Like sometimes, I mean, I mean, he kind of, I mean, whatever. I mean, he done took me to, I mean, okay. But are y'all together? Like, are y'all exclusively together? I mean, we just trying to give each other space to be able to know, know, you know, give time for the Lord to be able to, you know what I'm saying? And I know, okay. <laughs> but you've been, y'all, y'all, y'all been showing up together for the past three years. You don't know what y'all are? I'm messing up some people's situations right now. But it's okay. Because if it's not clear, I promise you, it will be confused. Yes. That's so good, and, and if you don't get clear on your position and your role and where you're supposed to be and what God has said and what he told you to do and watch this, what he told you not to do. If it's not clear, it's going to be confused. And this is the thing about when it's not clear, I need everybody to know. What's not clear will always be compromised. So, so, so the reason we got to get clear on the vision that God has given us in this year, the reason I spend so much time and I make it a, a yearly thing that I share vision with our church is because if we do not get clear vision from God, this church will become compromised. The transformation church doing all of this other stuff. Y'all read about us four years from now. And Pastor Mike then fell off and Bella then started uh, only fans. Oh, I'm telling you what's happening to other people. And this happened and that happened and this happened and that happened. Why? It's because we lost sight of a clear vision. The only way I fall off, the only way I, I do the things that I know I don't want to do is I lose sight. Okay, can I bring it real practical to you? Uh, Y'all know I've been on this workout journey and a health journey and all this other stuff. The only time I fall off and eat consecutive nights of Blue Bell cookies and cream ice cream (laughs) as a hold on me (laughs) is when I lose track of the vision God gave me for my health. So one thing God practically told me to do, he said, every week I want you to take a picture of yourself. In your drawers. Lord. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I see the progress. But I'm not fully Adam and Eve comfortable. 
Oh, y'all gonna be fake, okay. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not fool, naked and ashamed. You know, I'm naked and, and confident. I'm more of the naked and ashamed, you know what I'm saying? And God says, I want you to do that every week so you never lose sight of the vision. And when I see that, and then I get a craving, Charles. I'll be like, I'm not putting that over here. I'm not going to, I'm not going to set back what God has already set me up for. That means I don't know what it is for you. I'm just, I'm probably being too transparent right now. But, 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 but what I'm saying is you only start drifting when you don't see the vision clearly. Somebody shout at me clearly. clearly. So there's a story in Mark chapter eight, verse 22, where, where Jesus heals this blind man. It says they came to Bethesda. And, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to do what? Touch him. He had no vision, but the only way they thought the vision could become clear is if Jesus, y'all better, I'm preaching this thing already. And if you want your year to be everything that God called it to be, with no vision or blurred vision or wrong vision, the only thing you can do is ask Jesus to touch you. And I, and I have to say this because there are people that are watching right now and you don't have a vision and you feel ashamed because of it and you've been in a low and you've been in depression. And I need to let you know, um, there's only one place to go when you can't see. There's only one place to turn to, oh, excuse me, there's only one person to turn to when you can't see. And I need to be very clear about this. Some people have vision in an area of your life and they fool you like they have vision in their life. Because some people have a vision for their career, no vision for their family. Some people have a vision for health, no vision for consistency. And so don't be surprised when people who have a very strong vision and successful in something fall in another area because where there is no vision, the people perish, cast off restraint. They don't de develop or accept divine vision. They can't do it. I cannot look at somebody's Instagram feed and find out if they have a vision from God because there's areas that I don't see. And God's saying, I need you to get clear vision all the way around. I need clear vision. Somebody say all the way around. All the way around. So if you don't have vision, this is what you need to do. You can go to Jesus with no vision. I need to encourage somebody right now. Just got out of, I just got out of college, just got out of high school, just got out of middle school, just got all my kids out the house. My whole life for the past 20 years have been about them. I'm just retired. God, I've been frustrated. I've been angry. I don't know who I am if I'm not doing this. I do not know who I am if I'm not the life of the party. I don't, I've been so conditioned to fix, to plan, to organize, to orchestrate. That when you call me away to just be with you, I don't have a vision for a devotion life. I don't know. They talk about 21 days of prayer and fasting. I've just been starving the past seven days. Because I don't have a clear vision. And Jesus says, come to me. Everybody who's burdened and heavy laden. I will give you rest because I'm going to give you a, somebody shouted me vision. Okay. So they bring this man to Jesus and, 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 and look what verse 23 says. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Hold on. Can't you just heal me right here? Can't you just give me vision where I'm comfortable? Can't you? Can't you just, I mean, I, God, I want to hear from you. I want clear vision, but please do it in my convenience. 
I would really like you to give me a clear vision where I'm comfortable. But what he did with this man is say, you want vision? Brent, come here. You, 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 you can't see? You can't see? Give me, give, me, give me your hand. Come on. Let me take you somewhere that may be unfamiliar. Let me, let me lead you outside of your comfort zone. I'm telling you, for many of us in 2022, this will be the season that God leads us out of comfort so he can give us clear vision. Oh, I just said a mouthful. He's going to lead you out of your comfort so he can give you clear vision. Stay right here. Uh, uh, this is the point that I need you to know. Vision comes outside of your comfort zone. When God gave me vision for Transformation Church, it was outside of my comfort zone of all my skill set. I was a music producer, and God took me by the hand. He led me. Because do you know how I got to this church? I produced the music for their conference. That's how I got here. He led me. I'm going to use what's comfortable and make you take a step. I'm just doing music for the church. Oh, y'all need a sound man? Oh, y'all need a music director? Oh, you need a youth pastor? He led me. He didn't give me no vision about the transformation towers and about the building while I was over here producing music. He had to lead me. Oh, my God. Some of you, the vision you've been believing for is outside of your comfort zone. And he led this man outside of the village. Oh, do you know what else that means? He led him away from people. The village is where the people are who know you. And God's saying, we don't know where he led him to. We don't know if there were other people there. But, but what we do know is he had to leave the people and the places that he was normally around to be able to be in position. He ain't even got the miracle yet. He hasn't even... See, this whole year is about positioning and posture. God is trying to say, I want to give you something, Paul. I want to give you something, Evan. I want to give you something, Jules. But if you are not in position and posture, it has no authority to even come out into your life. Oh, okay. Come back, blind man. Because l- let me show you. Let me show you how most of us would have acted. That he would have said, come with me. Let me take you. And, and they would have started pulling back and saying, hold on, I don't know you. I'm not sure where you're going. And some of you, this is what you do when you get uncomfortable. You just sit down on the situation. And God said, I'm not dragging you this year. You don't want this vision? I'm not dragging your marriage into wholeness. I'm not dragging this. I I got a purpose. Many are the plans of man, but it's my purpose that will prevail. But if you sit down on me trying to take you out of what's comfortable, I'm not going to drag you. I'm not going to drag you. I'm going to hold your hand again, and I'm going to invite you. This is many of your invitations to get clear vision. This man, he doesn't explain to the blind man what he's about to do. The blind man had to have, shout at me, faith. Faith. Y'all know we're a church of faith and we're a church of what? Crazy faith. And this is the thing that you're going to have to use when God starts calling you from what's comfortable to give you a clear vision. You're gonna have to have faith to step. Some of y'all gonna have to have faith to get up. Ah. 2020, 2022 made you sit down. And some of y'all are still sitting down when God is holding your hand and saying, get up. 
I've called you for more. I've called you to do things that the world hasn't seen. I did not want you to be taken out. That was an obstacle you were supposed to overcome. That was supposed to be something that created something in you to be able to change the world. But I'm not done with you yet. Here's your invitation. Let's walk outside of what's familiar and who's familiar. And then watch what happens because the story get crazy right here. It literally goes from he took the blind man's hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You going to call me outside of my comfort zone? And then? Spit on me? Can I tell you what spit on me actually means? Let me let me let me break it down. You're going to do something to me that seems to the natural eye as degrading. That's lower than me. I don't do that no more. I I used to work in children's ministry. But God, don't spit on me. Don't don't put me in a position that degrades who. Do you know who I am? Do you know how much education I have? Do you know how long I've waited and I've been pure? And I'm when when whenever you see Jesus spit on something or somebody because there's a several times in the Bible. Now, this is Jesus, y'all. I, I, I'm just like, don't let nobody else spit on you, but I'm just saying like, this is Jesus. Like, this was a mode of healing people. Wow. By putting people in a positions that others would consider degrading, but actually was their upgrade. The way up is down. The way you're going to see this vision clearly is let God spit on you. Uh Uh-oh. What do you mean, Pastor Mike? Let him put you in a position that you never thought you would go back to. Let him put you in a position of of, of what is not popular. Let him put you in a lower pay grade. Let uh, Y'all missed it right now. Well, I've always made $85,000 a year, he said, but this next year you're going to make 40. Let me spit on you for a second. But I'm the God that will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. I'm just trying to see if you're humble enough to carry this miracle oh my god and some of you in 2022 have not been humble enough for the miracle you've been praying for so the reason why god's gonna allow the demotion the reason why uh, uh, nobody wants to hear that word the reason why god's going to allow them to walk out of your life the reason why is because he has to make sure you have a heart to handle the miracle He leads him outside and watch how good God is. He doesn't embarrass this man because he doesn't spit on him in front of everybody. Y'all don't be, that's the same Bible. We read the same Bible, right? He takes him out. You thought when God separates you, it was a punishment, but it was really protection. The reason he took him out of the village, thank you, Holy Spirit was because the work that he was about to do, others would misinterpret it. So he had to get him outside of what was comfortable so that the level of submission and humility that was about to be, he wasn't going to not spit on him, but he just didn't do it in front of everybody because he didn't want their reputation or his reputation to be tarnished by what he had to go through to receive the miracle. Jesus said, you good, brother? (sighs) 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 Now watch. He can't see, but he can hear. And this is the moment where many of us are in. Is that God is doing something and we hear him changing. We hear him even in your prayer. 
And in this time, he's changing something and you don't see it clearly yet. But you hear. (laughs) And this is where most people would not face Jesus anymore. What most people would do is turn away. <laughs> what, what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is just as he's physically standing here, knowing what's coming. God's saying, can you physically and spiritually and emotionally be able to stand when getting the vision or receiving it might get nasty? I'm going to say it in a point just like that. Receiving vision from God might get nasty. You mean, God, I just bought in crazy faith. I just bought my dream car. And now you're going to ask me to sell it back and ride in the hoop day again? Yeah, because the vision I'm about to give you, it might get nasty. And do you, do you hear and see the responses of the people? What what I'm telling you is how you just reacted is how the people in your life will react when God is doing what it takes for the miracle. What are you saying? This man was blind and what he was trying to do with this man is give him his DNA. What I just did was take, do y'all know how they... Do you know how they prove if somebody's related to each other? Is they get a swab of their saliva because the DNA on the inside of this person can tell me if these two people are in fact related. God said for me to change your situation that is blurry and unclear. I've got to put my DNA on your situation. On your 2022. On your plans. And literally, watch this, watch this. Watch this, watch this. He's blind. Ah. And so many of you right now are so bothered. Like literally some of y'all can't even look. How many of y'all, y'all can't even look right now. But this is what it will feel like when you built the house and decorated it fully. And God tells you to downsize this year. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah. This is what it will feel like when you finally bought your bought your uh, uh your family the vacation, and God says no vacation for two years. When you spent five years on a major, and God tells you on the last semester to change it, and I'm gonna give you four more years of something else. When you're a senior pastor of a church, and He tells you to close down the church and go serve as the youth pastor at a neighboring church. The thing about Brentham. The thing about the blind man and the thing about us, if we want to see clearly, we have to allow Jesus to do it. That man allowed me to put my spit on him. He, al- he could have fought me. Y'all see, this is my real little brother, just for everybody that's like, I'll never go to that church because he, okay, like, this is my real little brother. But at the end of the day, he's bigger than me, stronger than me. He could have made sure. Just like God can make sure. And just like you can make sure that God doesn't do it. He allowed that. And this year, God told me to tell you prophetically, I will only do what you allow me to do. You want to see clearly? Allow me to humble you. God, why won't you just take that person away from the job? That's your spit. I need you to work with them seven more months. 
Because I'm, all I'm trying to do right here is make sure you can handle. You're going to see clearly soon if you can handle this moment of humility. Ooh, can you handle the humility? Mm. Jesus asked the man, do you see anything? The man looked up and said, I see people. Now, everybody doesn't understand how much of a miracle this is. This man's blind. And then Brent, open your eyes. He did not remove what God put there. He didn't wipe it off. He had to open. Oh, shoot. He had to open his eyes. By faith. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Open your eyes. By faith. He could have told Jesus right then in that moment. You know I can't see. You know I've been blind this long. You know they never choose. You know my family never supported me. You know I've never been chosen to lead. You know that I don't have the education. But by faith. He opened his eye. I don't know who I'm talking to. But God is saying in this year, when I ask you to do it, I know you did it before. That man probably practiced opening his eyes a hundred thousand times. But after Jesus touched him, he had to open his eyes again by faith. And when he opened his eyes, he said, I see people. And they, they look like trees walking around. This tells me two things. First things it tells me is that this man has seen before. I see men, I see people, but they look like, how do you know what a tree looks like? If you never saw it before, God's saying to you, there's been seasons where you had vision, where I showed you clearly what it was supposed to be, where you stepped out in faith, where you knew it was me. And because of the cares, the trauma, the hurt, the pain, you were blinded. Nobody knows when this man was blinded. Nobody knows where it happened. But God said that this is the year that you're going to see what you used to see. You're going to see what you used to see. Some of y'all used to have vivid dreams. Some of y'all used to look at places and ride down streets and say, I know I'm going to live there. You, some of you, oh, I feel the presence of God right here. Some of you used to see sick people and be able to say, I'm going to heal. The matter of fact, in the name of Jesus, you will be healed and recovered. Some of you used to see your family and say, all of them going to be saved. All of them are going to declare the works of the Lord. You used to go into impoverished areas and say, I'm going to buy up the block and I'm going to be able to bless these people. You used to see it but when God touches you he gives you vision and he gives this man vision and he says um um yeah because you didn't leave my presence most people would have been done with the miracle right there they would have been okay believing blurry this would have been fine. It would have been okay for them to be like, yo, I couldn't see none. At least I see tree men. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Tree. Mr. Oak. Mr. Pine. <laughs> like, most people would have been like, God, thank you. But he lingered long enough. Why are we doing 21 days of prayer and fasting? We don't want no quick miracle, and some of y'all don't even know what's happening. But at Transformation Church, every year, we set aside 21 days to say, God, we're not moving without you. We're not going to do this without you. We want to see the vision clearly. And some of y'all need to join this. Tomorrow is day eight, and you can get right here. Why? Because we need to stay in his presence long enough for a second touch. Let me just go to the Bible. Yeah, I see men. That look like trees, verse 25, once more. I think 2022, Rashina, is the year of once more. Once more, Jesus puts his hands on the man's eyes. He said, my DNA is already on you. 
I don't need to spit again. All I need to do. Some of y'all was like, please, thank you. Don't spit again. But, but what you need to do is stay submitted long enough for me to touch you. Do you remember how on the example I gave you that, 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 that it went from blurry to clear? It was a touch. This is the prophetic symbol of your year. That if you stay in the place where God can touch your family, your situation, your hurt, your anger, your business plans, your entrepreneurial ventures, your serving status. If you, if you would just allow God to touch it again. Brenton, I feel this for you. God used you as an example on purpose. God's touching you. Mm. If you would allow him to touch you. And you only get touched in the privacy of his presence. This is not a platform situation. This is, this is in my quiet time, when I make time, when I cut off Instagram. And this is, this is where, when Netflix, when I unplug it, when I, when I take it away, like this one, God will not prioritize to touch you when you have not made his presence a priority. He touched him and look what happened to this man. All in one swoop, his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything. What's the word? And he saw everything. What? And he saw his marriage, his family, his business, his... God's not trying to touch you to see some things clearly. When you allow God to touch you, then you see everything. You're going to be able to identify your childhood trauma. When God touches you, what the therapist could not be able to pinpoint. When God touches you, you'll be able to go to the exact date in Mrs. Miller's class where your identity was shattered and be able to sever that generational lie. God will show you everything. Somebody shout at me clearly. And this is what God wants to do for us this year. Pastor Barbara, he wants us to see everything clearly. In that moment, God gave this man vision, he gave him clarity, and he gave him direction. Let me prove it to you. Verse 26, after this man saw everything clearly, Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go back. Don't go back to the comfort of where you came from. Go home. Go, 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 go back to the place where it'll be the biggest testimony that I changed you. Because at home, people really know you. He said, don't go back to the place where you were looking for validation from them. Don't even go back there. Because that's what most of us would want to do is go back to the place where they knew me one way and flex on them. I can see. I can see now. I got money now. I got a family now. You missed out on me now. God said, I don't even want you to go back there. Don't go back to the church. Stop talking about them. Don't go back to those people who hurt you. Stop that. Just go home. I want you to get used to this new thing that I'm doing in you. I want you to see everything. Somebody shot at me clearly. Okay, so that was my intro. And we really got to go. <laughs> but um, when I asked God, what is the clear vision for Transformation Church? He said, Pastor Michael, I need you to tell the people that this year, I need the vision to be so clear because watch this title. The vision is for invasion. God wants us to invade places. This ain't the word of the year yet. I'm just setting you up right now. But the, in, the vision he's giving you is for invasion. You are supposed to, as a child of God, invade the school, invade the government, 
invade the music industry, invade the construction facilities. You are supposed to invade entertainment, invade media marketing, invade the hospital systems. Somebody shout at me, invade. God wants to give you vision for invasion. He has declared that this is the season of the church no longer playing defense. It is time to play offense. When you are invading, that means you are the aggressor. And I came to tell Transformation Church, we are no longer getting vision to maintain what God has done. Bree, we're not playing defense. We're not playing not to lose. We're playing to, we are going to invade Tulsa with the love, generosity, and kindness of God. We are, uh, uh, y'all better hear me. I, I'm talking vision right now. I'm glad they're recording it because one day you're going to see we're going to invade every area that God calls us to. We're going to invade entertainment. We're going to invade social media. We're going to, y'all better hear me. We're going to invade the economic system. We're going to invade the housing system. You better mark my words. We've seen the vision clearly. We are, are going to invade religion. You thought it had to be one way The kingdom of God is here And we are here to invade But you can't invade Without a clear vision Okay, y'all getting it So let me give you the ingredients real quick I know we're not eating cake right now But the, the, the real thing about a good cake Or a good meal is you gotta have the right ingredients Okay, so I'm gonna give you the ingredients Quickly to, to, for impact because we don't want to have a vision that has no impact. A vision without impact is trash. Like, why, do we, why are we doing this and, 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 and it doesn't impact anything? So we want a vision for impact. And, and, and this is so invaluable. I wish somebody would have set me down at 19 and 20 and gave me these keys I'm about to give you. Because then it allows me to know what I'm doing and know what not to do. Because we need vision clearly. So clear vision. Number one has divine inspiration. God wants to drop on you in 2022 ideas that came from him. It's just divine inspiration. It's an idea from God. You know that you talk on an idea from God. Everybody's cell phone was an idea from heaven. You don't believe me, but the Bible tells us every good and perfect gift comes from above. Our father is the one that originates these ideas and these thoughts. And what he's wanting to do for the people who believe is allow them to have the faith to believe that he can give you a God idea. I don't want a good idea this year. I want a God idea this year. I don't want to just start a podcast because everybody's doing a podcast. Maybe you're not supposed to start a podcast. Maybe you're supposed to go back to cassette tapes. Y'all miss it. There may be a vintage craze that comes back three years from now where cassette tapes are worth $3,000 a pop. You don't know what's going to happen. Some of y'all buying Jordans for $2,000. You don't know what's about to happen. You got to get clear vision from God. When I got the clear vision for Transformation Church that the Spirit Bank Event Center would be Transformation Church, that was not a Michael idea. That wasn't me sitting around dreaming up what could happen. That was a God-inspired idea. Okay? Can I tell you something that nobody's probably told you? You have several God ideas waiting for you to receive. It's not just for the pastor. It's not just for the elite. It's not just for these people who seem to have a deep relationship with God. There are things that God wants to do in the earth and they will not happen unless you get the vision from God for them to actually come to pass. For some reason, God decides to do nothing on this earth without the participation of a human. And there are inspired ideas from the divine God we serve. 
the one who created us out of his ideas. And he wants to give you those ideas and visions this year. So you want a clear vision? The first thing you need to be praying for is divine inspiration. The second thing that you need to be able to see this invasion vision is you need to use your imagination. See, after you get a God idea, and I know some of y'all imagination died in the third grade after you figured out that people won't, won't support your wild ideas. Forget that. Imagination is a tool given by God. And when you get imagination, imagination is an incubator for a God idea. See, after God gave me the idea that the spirit bank would be transformation church, then I started imagining it enough to where I went to Google and got an image. And then I started going over there. I drove 30 miles from my house, maybe three or four times a week. And I would walk the property and I would see if the doors were open. I started imagining myself in the building. I took a picture with Bishop in the building. Why? Because I wanted to keep imagining what God could do with us. I literally walk into that building every week now with what I imagined being my reality. And God's saying, I am no respecter of persons. If you want to be able to see me give you a clear vision that changes everything, get divine inspiration and then start using your imagination. Imagine your house being able to house families who are in broken situations. That's why you need a larger house. Not just so you can stun on people. Imagine yourself being able to bless people. Be a, many of you have not imagined it because you need it. And God is asking you to step outside of your comfort zone and imagine what you need for others. I can't even stay on that a long time. Okay, so after you get divine instruction, then you need to use your imagination. And then you need to go to ooh, my favorite intercession. The only way that you can be able to get all your wild ideas into a distilled form is go to prayer. The reason, again, we're in 21 days of prayer and fasting is because we're asking God for divine vision. And I'm using my imagination and I'm writing down all this stuff. And then God says, don't skip this step. Come to intercession because intercession is the thing that is the interception of all impurities. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you take your wild ideas to God, then he purifies. I see it like a strainer. Y'all know when y'all making food and then you have to put the food in the strainer and it, and it lets all of the little impurities come out and only keeps the real thing. When you go to prayer, it purifies your motives. When you go to prayer, it purifies your ambition. When you go to prayer, he shows you yourself. And many of us get these visions from God and we never go to intercession. And God's saying to this church and specifically to me as a leader, he said, Michael, you have to live a fasted life. You have to live a life of intercession. Why? Because the vast vision and the divine inspiration that I'm giving you is going to have to be purified continually. Many of you have the right vision unfiltered. It's still got a lot of you in it. Well, I'm going to be on the main stage and da, 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 da. And he's like, yeah, you are going to be on the main stage, but it's not so you could be on the main stage. So that you can open up doors and be the light in the midst of darkness. And you don't even see that your vision still has too much of you in it. Uh, let me leave that alone. And after you come out of intercession, I'm trying to give you the ingredients right now. Then out of intercession, the thing you leave, you don't leave intercession until you get instructions. See, a lot of people, I prayed about it, and now I'm going to still go do what I want to do. If you pray about it, wait till he speaks to you. See, instructions illuminate the path. One thing I'm really bad at, and I just, let me confess to you as your pastor, I don't like reading instructions when my kids get toys. And I don't know if I'm the only father out here that's like, okay, yeah, it's 39 pieces, yeah, that goes here, and that goes here, and that goes here, okay, cool, 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 cool. And I can't tell you how many times I put together something and there's still three screws out and two major pieces, but it still looks like the box. And I tell my kids, cause they don't know it's good. And I let them play with it. And around day four or five, something that it was supposed to do, it don't work. 
because I did not follow the it can look like it works but at some point it will malfunction uh, can I say it? you can look like you work you can look like you paid. You can look like you're doing good. You can look like you're pure. But if you do not follow the instructions, where are instructions from? The word of God. It is the manual that we are supposed to live our lives by. If you do not get intel from the instruction book, at some point, at some point it will not work. It will malfunction. And I'm tired of seeing, let me be very clear right here, people who have presented themselves as men and women of God, stop working and malfunction because they actually weren't reading the instruction book. They would hand it to everybody else. You posting your YouVersion Bible app doesn't mean you're obeying the word. And I made a decision this year. I don't just want divine inspiration or use my imagination or take it to intercession. I have to get instructions. That blind man gets healed because he follows instructions. Okay. And now this is where the word says in Psalms 119, 105, it illuminates the path. Remember? Your word will be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What are you saying, Pastor Mike? This year for everybody a part of Transformation Church, you're going to have to read the word of God more than you ever have in your life. For the amount of vision that is for invasion, God said you have to be anchored in my word. You got to know, you got to have instructions of how to deal with people. You got to have instructions of how to love your enemies. You got to have instructions of how to be patient and kind and all these things. I need you in my word. And after you get instructions, now this is one people don't follow a lot of times, but you have to follow your intuition. Now I know this is, this is one that people don't talk about, but you ever felt something telling you? Like, how did you know they were the one? I don't know. Something just told me. Let me help you. The intuition is the Holy Spirit. It's the thing that's innate on the inside of you that's telling you, do that. I don't got no education to know to do that. And the Holy Spirit's like, do that. It's the instant answer from the Holy Spirit for a intentional decision you need to make. And a lot of times people ask me, Pastor Mike, how did y'all get transformation for that? There were so many times that I had gone to prayer. I had read the word. I knew everything I needed to do. But when I got in the moment, it was my intuition. I don't know why I'm saying we supposed to do that. But that's what we supposed to do. Well, Pastor Mike, how do you know? I just know. Because the God inside of me is speaking the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. He's telling me. And some of y'all are like, well, how do you know he will tell you? Jesus said in John 16, 13, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead you into all truth. You'll find out if it's the Holy Spirit, if it work or not. But too many of us are following, are not following that gut thing that we feel. God's been saying, go talk to that person. I don't know them. Go, go, go bless that person. They look fine to me. God, God's literally telling you, hey, give up that. Well, you know how long I've had this. God said, follow. And when you start tuning yourself into the spirit to follow the Holy Spirit like that, then you have to make a decision. I only got three more right here. Get it. I'm giving you the playbook for the invasion that you need to get, but it comes from vision. Then you have to make an investment. Anytime that God tells you to do something, he never does. He never pays for it in full except for salvation. Salvation is the only thing he pays for in full. He requires you to do something every other step of the way. And I know people don't tell you this, but if he's going to use you in mighty ways, you're going to have to put some skin in the game. 
You're going to have to sacrifice something. You're going to have to give up something. You're going to have to leave somebody. You're going, he's saying, where's your investment? What you going to do? No, 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 no. I need something from you. When you invest, it is the action that you are taking that ignites your faith. When you invest in something, you believe in it's going to have a return. Lord, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm putting my faith out there. And some of y'all have been believing, been praying, been using the Holy Spirit and won't invest nothing. You ain't, you so scared to lose the little bit you got. This, this is what you want to hold on to. God says, I have so much more for you in this year. But what are you willing to put in? The thing about, like everybody would invest in Amazon now. Oh, yeah, duh. But the people who are receiving the huge impact from investing is the people who invested when it took faith. It doesn't take faith to invest in Amazon now. All it takes is facts. And God said, the investment I'm requiring in 2022, I am prophetically speaking to y'all. I need y'all to hear me right now. I'm not trying to give you three points in a poem. I am not trying to tell you. I'm trying to give you instructions for your life. This year, it's going to take an investment where it seems like a desert. And if you would have had a crazy faith to invest in people who don't look done. Charles, that's what we got to do. What we've been believing for, we got to invest in people who don't look like nothing, nothing like what they're going to look like. Got to invest your time, your talent, and your treasure. You got to invest it. You, you, want, you want school systems to be taken care of? Adopt the teacher this year. No, not your church. Not your small group. You, take your shoe budget and go to a teacher that God leads you to and tell them if you need anything for your class, call me and I will pay for it. Invest. Uh, see, y'all don't want to do this. The investment in that one teacher will give you access to the school system. God's not going to put you in high places to make decisions when you won't invest in the low places that nobody sees. And so many people in 2021 want the validation of the investment when it blows up. And God is looking for somebody to invest and be obedient in the darkness. Because once you start investing in the right things and God starts making that thing multiply, then he gives you this next piece of the vision for invasion. He gives you influence. And influence, many people have messed this one up. All influence is, is an in instrument used for God's glory. See, a lot of people don't know why God gave me influence. They can't figure it out. Why in the world did this dude... He has six months of TCC, high quality education. This brother had almost a felony case for car insurance fraud. He tell us every Sunday he was a liar, a manipulator, addicted to pornography. Y'all already know him. Why would God give him influence? Because he knew if he gave me influence. I would use it for his glory. My question to you right now is if God did everything you're praying for, would you use the influence that God gave you for his glory? I, I can tell you that as God has allowed and expanded our church, and some of my team and staff will tell you, we've been at closing tables with, with, with billionaires buying property, doing different things. And every time I walk into those rooms, because God's given me influence and we just paid them for money, all this other stuff, I steal their time. And I tell my testimony. 
in every one of those boardrooms. People that don't believe, people who are in homosexual lifestyle, people, it don't matter who you are. You about to hear this story for God's glory. And it has happened time and time. And for some reason, God keeps putting me in these positions. Because he can trust me. And the question is, can he trust you with the influence? that he's, And you're thinking about people with money. And he gave you three kids. He gave you that cousin that for some reason has an affinity towards you. He gave you those coworkers. And you're waiting to have influence on a large scale. And God is seeing how you steward influence right where you are. Okay, let me move. Here we go. After God gives us divine inspiration, imagination, we take it to intercession, we get instruction, we use our intuition, we make an investment, we get influence. Then it's time for invasion. See, it takes a bunch of people having influence so that a bunch of people with influence who believe the same thing can invade an area. The reason why the church is weak in a lot of areas it's because enough of us don't have influence to actually invade. We could build our own school systems. Oh, my God. They don't even think like we could have whole communities literally built for people and have them pay for six years. And if they keep all their payments, we give them the house. I'm talking crazy right now. But somebody's connecting with what I'm saying. If there was enough of us in purpose and not begging and like, if there, D, D, if there was enough of us, a single mother needing a car, nobody in our state, they, they could look at our church and say, if any single mother needs a vehicle, go to this church. If there was enough of us, we could invade, but we can't invade without a clear vision. God said to me, Michael, I just want to make this vision very clear this year. Transformation Church is about to invade. And everybody that is connected to this is about to invade their spheres of influence. Government, you need to receive this right now. Entertainment, the schooling system, education, the church arena. We are about to invade, invade the music industry. We're about to, God is about to drop such clear vision that we're about to invade therapy, no, I'm talking about we're about to invade science and medicine. We're about to invade social work. We're about to invade art. We're about to invade. I need y'all to hear me. This church is about transformation nation. God is about to strategically place you in positions of influence because he's going to give you the vision to invade. And he's going to take you through all of these characters. And we are going to be able to invade places where they've kept believers out of for years. We are about to invade politics. We are about to invade the public square. We are about to invade every area of building. We're about to invade. No, I'm telling y'all. We are about to invade. Somebody say invade. We are about to invade. I'm telling you, somebody is making your baby jump right now. We're about to invade homelessness. We're about to invade um, um, sex trafficking. We're about to invade. I don't know what I got to do to get somebody to believe, but we are about to get vision for invasion. We're about to invade, Don. That means we have to see the vision. What? Clearly. So this is where I'm going to end. I'm going to tell you this. Every year, God has made the vision very clear to me. The one thing I can say, I can't do a lot of things well, but the one thing that I can do well, I put that on my mama and she's sitting on the front row. I will go away 
and I will get vision from God. I will not sit up here and fake it till you make it. I can't do that because it's too imperative that I see clearly. 2015, when I became the lead pastor of this church and I took over from a white gentleman in the hood of Tulsa with about 350 people here. And some people in the room were here on this platform where he handed me the baton and tons of people left and tons of people came and all this different stuff happened. And God said, yeah, 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 yeah. 2015, Michael, I just want you to survive it. That was the word he internally gave me, survive. What happens when God just tells you survive the season? To survive it. Not conquer success, like survive it. And many of you, I feel prophetically that the last season you came out of, you survived it. And in 2016, the finances were about the same. The people were about the same. And God gave me another private word. He said, Michael, maintain. That's not sexy when that's the clear word from God. Survive. And then you're going to give me the next year, maintain. But he was building something in me. In those two years, I lost almost all of my staff. In those two years, it was me and Tammy. And I would, I, I would literally walk in the back of this building. And I would come in on Mondays with nobody here. Good morning, John. Good morning. Good morning, Tim. I would just start yelling out people's name. Tammy would be cracking up in her office. And because and, all I had was a vision. The thing that kept me going was the vision that God showed me when I stood right here, 19 inches above the ground and said that Transformation Church would be a multi-ethnic, multi-generational, multiplying, multi-campus church. And we were none of those things. I said it would be diverse and we would be generous and we would give. And I said all of these different things and I lost my whole staff. And I'm sitting here holding on to an invisible truth. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. It was the truth. It was just invisible. And so I kept walking in it. Good morning, good morning. And then God told me as I went away on sabbatical to seek him for the word of the year for 2017. And God said, Michael, this is the year you're going to go beyond. He said, we're going beyond. And I was like, you know, I can do beyond to infinity and beyond. I can, let's do this. And the church grew almost 400 people. We had 400 families. We had 396 salvations. And the budget grew $400,000. Couldn't nobody tell me nothing in 2017. We went beyond. It was the first time I saw a little glimpse of what God wanted to do here. And then guess what he said? 2017 was beyond, but 2018, guess what he told me? Arrgh! Hit the brakes. You about to stride. Because I'd started to become ambitious about helping God do what he wanted to do in our church. And he said, you're not going to strive, S-T-R-I-V-E, into this. Use all your effort and energy. You're going to trust me, get a vision for invasion, do that process, and you're going to stride, S-T-R-I-D-E. That means to walk in long, decisive steps in an intentional direction. Michael, you're a runner. Start walking. What happens when God acknowledges who you are and tells you the opposite? Hey, you talk a lot. Shut up. That's, that's the equivalent. But the one thing I did was obey him. I literally, we canceled things. We were in a room on December 5th or December 5th and 6th having a strat up. God told me to do this. Demario, Jules, y'all remember this? We were there and I stood up. I said, I don't understand what God's saying, but he's saying less is more. So we're canceling this. We're canceling this. We're canceling this. We're not even going to do a big Christmas service. And y'all know Christmas is when you pull out, you know, the Santa Claus, the, 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 all the stuff, the lights, the camera. We canceled and had a regular service. They took away my illustrations that year. Tammy laughing because she know we didn't have the budget for it. I was up here. I didn't have the budget monetarily and I didn't have the budget staff wise. So I would be up here every night until two o'clock in the morning building my illustrations. 
so I could get up the next morning and preach. We went to the shroud up. They said, no more illustrations. Tim Ross looked me dead in my face and said, in this season, you're going to do less. He said, you're going to have to stand flat-footed and preach. And it felt like they took my Snuggie blanket from me. But God was teaching me. And at the moment, I obeyed. See, you don't have to understand to obey. I didn't understand, but I still obeyed. This is a word for somebody. You don't have to understand to obey. I obeyed. And it was December 23rd or 24th of 2018 that a young lady posted a clip of me pouring some water into some orange balls in a series we called Relationship Goals. And that clip on Twitter that I didn't even have at the time, two million people watched it in 48 hours. And God said, I was just making sure you knew you weren't running fast enough to make this miracle happen. I needed to slow you down so I could get the glory. And God told me that year, take only two speaking engagements a month. I'm going to Bree and the team telling them I'm taking only two speaking engagements a month. And they tell me, you only had four requests last year. And I took all of them months. I took every single one of them. But in my secret place, where I went back to get vision, and I took it to intercession, and it was actually in 21 days of prayer and fasting, God said, take two engagements a month for the rest of this year. By March, 1,800 speaking requests had come in. But God was setting me up to continue to stride. And then the next year, what did he tell us, church? 2019, he said, release. In 2019, God said he was going to release us from stuff, release us to stuff, and release us into other things. That's when we got the Spirit Bank Event Center. He released us from this location into that location. We were not even supposed to be there yet. But God prophetically at our conference said, you can't go back. We literally planted our feet in crazy faith there and paid the building off five months later. Y'all, I can't make this stuff up. Clear vision allows you to see miracles. And he released us into another stratosphere of understanding, revelation, wisdom, and influence. In 2020, God said, this is the year I'm going to make you stronger. Nobody knew it was the pandemic year. See, when we thought it was stronger, we thought he was going to do some, some, some accelerated something. He put pressure on us. Because the only way to get stronger is to lift the pressure some of you have been about to give up and God says I'm trying to make you stronger so I put weight on so that you can lift it in 2020 our church exceeded every expectation not because we thought it was going to come the way that God wanted to come because the Holy Spirit helped us lift the burden and can I tell you one statistic that happened in 2020 that changed us forever? When we said we were going to get stronger, we went harder after people finding transformation in Christ and being saved. In the year of 2020 alone, 29,273 people gave their life to Christ. Can we celebrate? Oh, y'all better come on in. Almost 30,000 people. In the year that we thought was going to take us out, Jimmy, God populated heaven. And then last year, y'all know what he told us, get anchored. And God said, I'm, I'm completing a sentence. He said, I need you to be anchored because things will come to make you drift. Don't do 21 days of prayer and fasting. Don't keep giving in generosity. You got haters and people making YouTube videos about you. Don't be bold. Come on, just cut it back a little bit. Stop, stop doing what got you here. Play it safe. You got too much to lose. And God said, no, just anchor to me. If you anchor to me, we can go into deep waters. If you anchor to me, I'll take you places that nobody could ever take credit for. And I promise you, even if storms come, you won't drown. 
and we stayed anchored. And I just want to shout one more time. In the year 2021, do y'all know how many people got saved? Because of the giving, the service, the invitation, and the love of the people that are a part of this church? 47,978. So y'all better. Almost 50,000 people got saved last year. Let's give God a shout of praise right there. Hallelujah. Heaven is being popular. We're invading. See, because the greatest invasion is when we invade hell. And populate heaven. Y'all think we backing up now? We 16 days into this thing and they told me almost 3,500 people in the past 16 days have given their life to Jesus Christ. Oh, we on a trajectory to see the most people transformed in Christ this year than ever before in our church. Invasion. But as I begin to pray about what the word of the year is for 2022. The Holy Spirit said, Michael, I'm closing the chapter of this book, and it's the end of an era. He said, and I'm not giving you a word this year. I'm giving you a phrase. I said, okay, Holy Spirit, okay, you're giving me a phrase. And he said, Michael, he said, what I want to do in my people's lives and in this church is going to be amazing. But everybody is so focused on there. When I get the influence, when I get married, when I get the business, when I have the money. He said, my people have been focused on the future and it's making them negate the present. He said, Michael, I want you to tell my people and I want you to teach them that the phrase of the year for Transformation Church, and I want you to see every year, this vision has come to pass. Every single one. This year, it's going to come to pass. He said, tell them this. Here is holy. I said, what? He said, tell them right here is holy. Somebody say it with me. Say, here is holy. Say it again. Here is holy. With your flaws, here is holy. Holy, with everything you got, here is holy. God said, we're not going to focus on there. I'm there. Because I'm the God who was, is, and is to come. Hey, can you put that uh, uh, pin on the screen? I'm not going to preach it this week. But next week, if you don't get here, you're going to miss how this thing is going to unfold in your life. Anytime you're on a map, this little symbol, it tells you, you are here. And many of us have not been located. On, on the map of your mission, you're missing. On the map of your mission that has your name, you're missing. Nobody can locate you. God said it's because you didn't like here. You're frustrated about why you're here. You're so mad that God let you come here. You don't see the value of here. I don't know why God would put me with all of my talent, gifting, and everything that he's told me. Why would he let me be here? This whole series that we're about to go into is going to flip your perspective upside down because God wants you to know if he placed you there, here is holy. He's about to use this place and separate you to do great things that you never thought was possible, but you'll never get there if you do not reverence, respect, and release yourself to embrace here, where your family's at, 
where your emotional state is at, where your money's at. God said, here, yeah, your company, you want it to grow. And he said, but right here, I'm still going to do a miracle here. Well, nobody even knows I sing. Yep. But right there, <laughs> there is taken care of. But right here, I'm going to develop a, a song in you that the world will sing. Here is holy. And even as I'm standing here right now, this is a holy moment. Because the enemy fought me so hard, Clifford, to not share this word because it's not sexy. This word takes sacrifice. Can I give you the subtitle of this year? <laughs> this is going to be fun. The phrase is here is holy, but the subtitle is this is the year of intentional limitations. The limitations this year will not be imposed on you. They will be set by you. Hmm. We're maturing this year. The limitations aren't going to be a punishment. The limitations are going to be proof that you heard from God. There will be things that you could do that you won't do, not because you can't do it. It's because you heard from God clearly and you set the limit. This is the year here is holy because this is the year of intentional limitation. Oh, I feel God. And I'm telling you, I'm about to walk us through. I have next week's message, the message after that, the message after that. God has told me to take you on a journey that is about to change the trajectory of your life. Because if we get it right here, we're going to be fine over there. But there is in jeopardy if I don't handle here. Somebody say, here is holy. Father, I did what you asked me to do. So today on Vision Sunday, as I've told people, you want us to see vision clearly. And God, you want to give us vision for invasion. Father, before we storm anything, you're saying, take this whole year of 2022 and consecrate it to me. And call this place holy. Here. Is holy whatever you want to do for whatever you want to do for this year God we're open come on hands just lifted in a posture to receive all over the world right now just God I'm open some of you you, you you need to get in a kneeling position you need to stand just change your position right now wherever you're at just change your position because that's what's happening prophetically right now in your life your position is getting changed right now your heart posture is getting changed your perspective is being rearranged well, however you want it where you want to kneel you want to stand just don't be in the same position you were in and I want you to put your hands out and just say God whatever you want to do wow whatever you wanted to God I'm saying what you're saying here is holy right here God I'm gonna let you change my character right here God I'm gonna let you change my ideas right here God I'm gonna let you refine me right here God I'm gonna allow you to help me to forgive because here is holy God I'm not gonna run from this like the blind man I'm gonna let you do this even if it feels like a demotion, even if it feels hard, I will not come out of this year without everything you've asked me and considered for me to have. Right here is holy. Father, I pray that you would give our church the faith to trust you this year more than we ever have before. Oh, I feel the presence of God. God, give us the ability to not go back into the village and try to find our miracle. Let us stay out here in the holy place, the separated place, the place where you want to give us a fresh vision. And we're, we're declaring here is holy.
Father, I don't know what you're going to do with all of this. I'm standing out here in crazy faith, but I've seen you do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So God, I'm just asking you, could you blow our minds? Could you, could you literally rewrite our family history through our obedience this year? Father God, we will acknowledge, even when we don't understand, we will obey, even when it doesn't make sense, that here is holy. We say holy, holy, oh, holy, Lord, God. Oh my see my soul shall rise come on this is a holy moment right here holy 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 You're the God in three persons. Sit right here, here is holy. Sit right here, here. Said right here, here is holy. Mm. With how I'm feeling right here. here is holy. You need to just declare that no matter how you're feeling. Said right here. here is holy. In the midst of my frustration, said right here. Oh, I feel the presence of God. You are releasing me to be content right here. I'm going to receive everything I need. Said right here. Come on, I'm just going to sing that a couple of times. Somebody say, said right here. God, God, we worship you because you can do the miracle right here. If the situation doesn't change, I will right here. God, I'm surrendered to you right here. Say, my storms, my storms. My anchor's gonna hold. Thank you, Jesus. You are a firm foundation, God. You're my holy home, Father God. I can trust you. Come on. My storms won't shake. I can trust you, God. Right here. here so 
Somebody needs to declare that right now. Where I'm at right now, God's going to do the miracle right here. Father, we accept what you've said and however you want to flesh this word out all of 2022. Somebody say, I receive, I accept, I will obey this word from God. Okay, look. Can you do the he that dwells? So just, just receive this. God, God is about to do something on the inside. He's about to dwell. He's about to teach you how to dwell. Yeah, he's about to teach you how to dwell. Turn Matt up. And, and, and Caleb, just do this real quick. Just. We're getting in his presence this year. Say. Somebody say. Right here. This is going to be our declaration all year. Said right here. I can feel the presence of God already, Charles. Said right here. Right where I'm at. Like I said earlier, God's not going to drag you into giving you this fresh vision. You got to receive it and accept it. And I'm so grateful for the church that I get to lead. Because every year, there's been tens of thousands of us that have taken this journey to believe through this little tattered vessel what God has said. And I don't know what he wants to do this year. But he told me to tell you and to believe for myself that right here is holy. He's not going to do something in the future that's going to outweigh right here. Because he's here. It's holy. And I'm going to try to walk us through this, y'all. But I don't know if we're going to get out of this series for a minute. Because the revelation that he's showing me of how we have to divorce our, our identity from there. When I lose the weight, when I do this, when you love it, you got to love what he's put right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's progression. We're going to do that. But God said you've been devaluing here. The fact that you're here. The fact that you got your right mind, or at least half of it, here. <laughs> like... This year, we're divorcing ourselves from the future. Because the Bible tells us clearly, don't be prideful and say, tomorrow I'm about to do this. And the next day I'm about to do this. He said, he, you should say, if it's his will. <laughs> and many of us have been so arrogant. He said that you have not reverenced here. They call it the present. That means it's a gift. Got that from Kung Fu Panda. 
but it's so true. It, it, it's the present is our gift. Here is holy. So next we gonna unpack it. But if you don't value vision, this meant nothing to you. You logged off 30 minutes ago. But for the for the 20,000 people who had heard this word clearly, this is the vision for us to invade. Well, Pastor Mike, I need to do more to get there. Uh-uh. Whenever God tells you to stay here, that means he moving and working up there. When God tells you to focus on here, that means he knows what it takes and what you're going to need there. And it becomes a miracle instead of our muscle. This year, he's saying, right here. Father, I thank you that we receive your word. There's some people that are here and the Holy Spirit's been pulling you all day. You, 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 it's like a tug, that, that, that thing on the inside of you that's trying to lead you to truth. That's Holy Spirit trying to lead you to Jesus. And literally this week, over 2,000 people gave their life to Christ every night in prayer. It's just been nuts. But today, this moment is for you. And if you're here, and you're watching this broadcast or you're watching a replay, the Holy Spirit is with you right there in the room you are in and he's drawing you. He's trying to grab you by the hand like Jesus grabbed that man by the hand and lead you into a new life so that you can be everything that God has called you to be. And today, I wanna tell you the greatest decision you could ever make is to surrender your life right here and say, God, I wanna give my life to you. Invade me, change me, transform me, turn me into the person and give me the vision you want me to have. And today I'm telling you, as sure as I'm sitting here and I'm Wedding, that God can take a broken, hurting, backwards person like me and change you to the point to where not you're perfect, but you're progressing and you can help other people become who God's called them to be. I was a liar. I was a manipulator. I was addicted to pornography. I had a felony case for car insurance fraud and God found me at my lowest moment and said, Michael, I'll still use you. And I surrendered to him and today is your day of surrender. I feel the presence of God. I need y'all to start praying. The enemy has been trying to snuff your life out and take you away from the purpose that God has called you to and you have not seen the vision clearly. But today, God comes to restore your vision and touch you once again and give you the opportunity to walk into his plan for your life. Today is the day of salvation. Here is holy. If you want to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, it's very easy. you got to repent. That means turn from how you've been deep doing your life, how you've been leading your life, what you've been going to, and you need to turn to Jesus. According to Romans 10 and 9, you have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died for your sins and you are saved. And today, I want to give you the opportunity to transform your life. And the great thing about this is, wherever you are, all of heaven is in anticipation of just one person accepting Jesus today. And I believe there will be hundreds, if not thousands. I feel an anointing on this moment right now that people who have been far from God, you have been wayward, you've been trying to self-medicate, you've been trying to do things to soothe yourself and live another day. God said, I am the answer. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I want to take you to my Father, but you got to come through me. I'll walk you straight to the throne of grace and give you mercy you got to acknowledge that here is holy and today is your day of salvation if you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior we're about to pray but you're saying Pastor Mike I want to be included in that prayer today is my day of salvation don't matter who's sitting next to you it don't matter what you did last night it don't matter what you were planning to do tomorrow God's saying I interrupted I invaded your life to transform your life if that's you 
and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior on the count of three I just want you to slip your hand in the air wherever you are in your car at your cubicle running on the track watching in the living room or in a church service I want you to lift your hand one you're making the greatest decision of your life number two I'm proud of you but forget that God is going to write your name in the Lamb's book of life and your eternity is secure three shoot your hands up all over the world I feel the presence of God right now this is what we're gonna do at Transformation Church we're a family nobody prays alone so for the benefit of those coming to Christ in this holy moment right now I want us to all say this prayer out loud together say God thank you for getting me here today I'm giving you my life I believe you lived you died and you rose again with all power just to save me today I surrender take over make me mold me change me transform me I'm yours because I believe you lived and you died just for me in Jesus name amen if you prayed that prayer I got great news for you you are safe and all of heaven is rejoicing and shouting and all of transformation nation is rejoicing and shouting because right here God has made it holy you are transformed glory to God if you just made that decision I want you to text save to the number on your screen because you know what right here yeah, I'm right here. here this is a new day for you. Oh my goodness. Y'all, I'm so pumped out. Because it's out of me now. It's been cooking in me for six months. God gave me this word back in, in, in the, it was last year in a writing session that we had as we were going and we made this song. And out of this song, God began to speak to me and said, Michael, this is what I'm doing. I'll tell you the whole story next week. But I want you to write it down somewhere. Mark it down. Journal it. Post it. Here is holy. It won't make sense to everybody right now. But it will by the end of this year. Everybody say it with me. Here is holy. That's the prophetic vision for our lives, for our church. And we're going to walk this thing out. I want to thank God for every person that just gave their life to Christ. Oh, y'all. I got so many emotions right now. This will be the best year of your life if it's your best year spiritually. Join us on this fast. Listen, I'm going to even tell you, if you're not on the fast yet, go eat some meat tonight. Go, go, go just act the fool one more time. Now, everybody on the fast, this is not for you. This is not for you, okay? Y'all was like, Pastor, I, I came in right when he said it. No, no, no. But if, if you're in a place where you're like, you know what? I've never fasted before. We got all kind of resources on the app. We, we, we have my parents who are the prayer pastors. They explain to you what prayer and fasting is. We got, we got all kinds of research. We got a version Bible plan that you can download. Just skip through all the other days and just start on day eight with us tomorrow. And then when we get done, you just keep going the rest of the seven days. Let's just make it. But I'm telling you, this year is going to take an investment. You're not going to see a return on anything you didn't invest. Invest the first 21 days of this year with the community of people. And every night, tomorrow night, we are gonna be blowing up the spot. Now that I release the word of the year, we gonna pray this thing all the way through. Tomorrow night at six, I want you to be back here and we're gonna pray and we're gonna fast and we're gonna believe because here is home. Can y'all do me a favor? All this week, evaluate what here looks like in your life. What you like about here, what you hate about here. 
Because I'm going to need you to come back next week a little more aware of here. Because you've been so trying so hard to get there. But God said, I want to do a work and a miracle and a breakthrough right here. I'm telling you, Transformation Church, you've never seen the move of God like you're about to see. Because we're going to obey God and stay right here. Father, thank you for what you did today. Thank you for the people that you're confirming words to. People you're challenging with the word of God. And people, Father God, that you're, you're inviting them into a new level of living and believing and trusting you. We declare, I declare, in the face of people being like, I don't know what that means. Here is holy. We trust you and we believe you. I pray that today is going to be an amazing day and tomorrow will be the best day of fasting that we've ever had father that you would give us clear vision everybody say clear vision that you would give us clear vision that the fog the frustration the obstacles and the gap would be erased from our vision that we will be able to see what you're trying to do so we stop stumbling father god bless this week bless our church bless this fast bless your people and until the next time we meet together father god keep us protect us and transform us in jesus name somebody say we agree we expect amen until next week go out and live a transformed life i love you